The battle to become West London's number one team kicks us off. Uh, Chelsea have 12 points, Fulham on 11, Brentford on 10. So there's really nothing in it. Um, Chelsea are going into, though, Sam, a tricky run of fixtures. Given that, is this the must-win game before that all kicks off? Yeah, if they've got aspirations for getting into the European positions or or better, then yeah. But Brentford have proved last couple of seasons since they've been promoted that um, they've got the handle on on how to go to the bridge and put in performances. So it's a tough game. They look a lot more like their old selves, I would say, in terms of the the, the amount of chances created. Um, you know, defensive solidity as well. I don't think that's been a massive issue this year with Brentford. I think they're probably, they're evolving a little bit and we've probably spoken about this previously on this show, teams that have consolidated in the Premier League that have really done well and surprised in the Premier League, being able to stay up comfortably. I think they are going through a little bit of a, a style change at the moment, maybe slightly out of necessity, not having Ivan Tony as that option to play into a little bit earlier. They're certainly taking the ball off the goalkeeper a little bit more and, and trying to play a few more passes, trying to progress the ball. So that's probably just a product of that, that the, the results have been a little bit indifferent uh, and also um, the injury issues. I mean, losing Rico Henry um, is a colossal blow. Yanout played there in the last game. That could be a bit of a problem solver. I think Yanout, yes, he's a midfield player, but he's experienced enough and uh, intelligent enough probably to do that role. Um, Kevin Sharder, losing him as well a few weeks ago. But they've got Mopay now and, and that allows Vissa and, and Mbomo to continue playing those wide positions which they do so well. So they'll go to the bridge tomorrow very, very confident, I would suggest, off the back of that Burnley victory. The 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 know-how that they've, they've gone there and got a couple of superb results in the last couple of seasons. So it's a tough, tough game, but yeah. Chelsea would love to win this game, I'm sure, and then take care of business against Blackburn um, in the EFL Cup on Wednesday. And they go into the Tottenham game. Yes, a really difficult game, but in a pretty good place. Let me ask you this, because um, I was impressed by Chelsea last weekend. Mm -hmm. I thought they played um, really well in the first half in particular without creating too much. I thought that they were quicker to every ball. They were sharper than Arsenal in every area of the park. And I thought, you know what, this is a team that's really up for it. The atmosphere inside the bridge was great. Don't think the conditions helped the game um, too much. But, you know, for all the credit that Chelsea emerged from that performance with, they did score ultimately fr from a penalty and from what I think was a cross, regardless of what... It was a cross, Harry. It, it was, wasn't yeah. it? <laughs> regardless of 100%. what Miguel Mujic says. Um, but it still feels like they're still struggling mm. to score... I don't want to say proper goals from open play, but they're still struggling to to get the ball in the back of the net through more, I don't know, orthodox means, should we put it that way? Is that still a concern? Well, put aside the Arsenal result for, for a moment, the, the, the previous two home results were 1-0 home reverses against Nottingham Forest and, and Aston Villa. And tomorrow, it's a completely different game, isn't it? It's a completely different game in the mindset of the Chelsea supporters are going there. With respect to Brentford, who have done it astonishingly well, and I've got the utmost respect for, for them as a club. But the focus will be on Chelsea playing a more attack-minded style, uh, opening up Brentford maybe more than they, they were able to do against Arsenal at, and probably playing an out-and-out -out striker from the off, which will likely be Jackson because Broyers seems to be struggling somewhat. So it's a completely different type of game. Um, so, yeah, I will be concerned you know, going there tomorrow as to whether it's going to be similar to that Villa not in a forest performance or can they show the the, the quality the organisation um, the game plan not the same game plan but what they showed in terms of endeavour against Arsenal with that conversion of chances that'll be the that'll be the big question I just I just thought it was tactically brilliant from Pochettino I, I can't draw on a comparison to any other game this season it was a one-off game plan mm. Uh, f because it was Arsenal to stop them playing through them um, to play two midfield players furthest forward and they actually broke through Arsenal quite well in that first half you're right didn't create golden chances but got out really well the two players Gallagher and Palmer 
just presented that awful proposition for the Arsenal defenders. Do we go into midfield and mark them or do we, we hold our line? It's difficult when you, you're presented with that type of opponent. Um, so I thought it was really good from the manager. The, character, the players did well, but yeah, I thought Pochettino for an hour got the better of Arteta and unfortunately he couldn't get over the line. Just some news that's breaking. Um, Armando Broja has been confirmed as being out mm. uh, of the game and uh, Reese James uh, is not going to be fit enough to start uh, from what we're seeing uh, coming through at this moment in time. Um, let's just cross over to um, a clip from earlier today, Mauricio Pochettino speaking ahead of this one, and he was asked how far away his team is from being a Chelsea side that he's happy with. We talk about wrestle and we talk about uh, performance and we need to improve, still improving. I think, of course, that we need to recover all our players. The circumstance from the beginning uh, didn't help at the moment to to improve in different areas in the way that we want. But the thing is, is we are, um, you know, building a very a strong team. Uh, the mentality is there, uh, much, much better. Our standard start to go high. And I think is, yes, we are happy in the way that we are, you know, evolved from the day one, but still far away that what we expect from from our team and from from us and I think we are Chelsea and and we know that this our responsibility is is, uh, is massive and all is about to win it's clear from listening to Maurizio Pochettino that he knows that his side have still got some way to go somebody that was expected to be at the heart of Chelsea um, pushing forward this season was Rhys James of course uh, returned to the picture against Arsenal but how much of a concern is his fitness becoming given what we've just said that he probably isn't fit enough to start tomorrow I think it is because it's gone on so long now um, yeah it would have been reassure, reassuring had it had just been you know sporadic injuries at the start of his career but given that he's a established England player now probably on his day the best player that Chelsea have got in their, their ranks you know I said to you probably the last time we did a show together I thought he was one of the best players in the Premier League for a period last year early part of the campaign so so much was his involvement in goals, you know, creating, scoring, carrying the team really single-handedly through a horrendous period. So it is a worry because it's gone on for so long now. Yeah, um, I think Gusto's a very able deputy. I think they're fortunate that they've done good business there. He can improve going forward. He's not at the level of Reese James in terms of supplying opportunities and getting shots away. But defensively, I like him. He's a pretty steady hand. That's not a massive area of concern for me but I think Reese James is that good that of course he's going to he's going to catapult Chelsea into a, a, a different proposition stratosphere straight away when he's when he's fit and he's at it actually looking at the team against Arsenal for the first time maybe Pochettino's got a bit of a problem in the, the forward positions because if he if he wants to play a centre forward I, I I think he will given the the opponent Jackson comes in then he's going to have to leave one of you would imagine Sterling Palmer, Mudrick out of the team. And I think Palmer scored back-to-back. Mudrick started scoring. Sterling's been Chelsea's best. Started crossing. Started, started crossing. <laughs> yeah, he got the one at Fulham, didn't he? So they, and that one, yeah, the, for, the fortunate one the other day. And Sterling's been arguably Chelsea's be, best attacking player. So all of a sudden, he has got a couple of selection dilemmas, which will be, I would suggest, a nice problem because he's not had yeah. that. He's just had to get a team out. I think he should start with the same three that played against Arsenal. I know it's not mm. with the conventional centre forward that maybe he might really? want in a game like this, but I think they caused Arsenal all sorts of problems with their energy. The fact that they can interchange, I think, is is really big as well. Um, turning our attention to to Brentford mm. just quickly, um, a good win last time out versus Burnley, but it's been an underwhelming season for them so far. How much of their underwhelming form at the start of this campaign do you put down to Ivan Tony being absent? Well, he was very bullish when he, Thomas Frank, I think towards the end of last season and the early part of this campaign, that it wasn't going to be an issue. Um, I think it is because he's such a talismanic figure for them um, and it gives them the option to play for the long throw, um, to go a little bit more direct. But within that, I think that there has been, whether this was forced on by the Ivan, Ivan Tony situation, I think that Thomas Frank has worked hard in the summer, early part of this season, to evolve Brentford style. That definitely, that has been evident to me when I've been there. Actually, I think I was there for two games, but Everton being the most recent one where they were horrendously bad. Um, but definitely, kind of Norgard, 
Jensen probably more often actually dropping very deep alongside centre halves, getting the ball, trying to build a lot slower, um, you know, a, a lot more meticulously than than probably Brentford have been in the Premier League the first two seasons. So whether that was always going to happen or whether that's been hurried along because of Tony's absence, only the the manager would know. So it's been a difficult start. But when you look at the look at the uh, the numbers and the statistics, they're creating loads. They're right up there in terms of of xG and and shots and so on and so forth. And the, the goals against Column isn't disastrous either. So. It's been a problem when they've gone behind. I don't think they've recouped anything from um, conceding the first goal. And also they've not been able to go, get over the line in, in quite a number of home games as well. So teething problems, but as um, I think it was Andy Townsend said, as we were just coming in there, I'm not overly concerned about Brentford just because you have trust in the manager, you have trust in the way they sign players, and I think they'll be better than considerably better than three teams at least in this division so I wouldn't be worried about them getting relegated but certainly probably um, doubtful they're going to reach the same points totals as they've done in the previous seasons but that's where we need to be fair isn't it in terms of the expectations that we put on a club like Brentford survival is paramount that's first and Mm. foremost the, the priority for them at the start of any campaign so you know even if they were to avoid relegation by the skin of their teeth that would still be by Brentford's standards as a football club throughout their history are positive and and we have to remember that it's only because Thomas Frank's done such a magnificent job that we now expect more from them and Ivan Tony due back in January um after the sort of mini winter break I just wonder if he'll still be a Brentford player then though this uh when you take into consideration how many clubs are being linked with him and are said to be interested um let's get a prediction quickly Sam uh, from you on this one Chelsea versus Brentford mm coming up live on TalkSport tomorrow I think Chelsea will win I think it'll be tight I think it'll be 2-1 to the home side on AM on DAB via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker TalkSport